Ja, schönen guten Abend, herzlich willkommen im Kino des Deutschen Filmmuseums. Ich begrüße Sie im Namen des Filmkollektiv Frankfurt und des Deutschen Filminstituts. Wir, das Filmkollektiv, sind sozusagen die Organisatoren mit dem Lift zusammen dieser Werkschau zu Jocelyn Saab. Es war einmal Beirut, Werkschau Jocelyn Saab. Und das hier heute ist der Abschluss des Schwerpunktwochenendes, wie wir es genannt haben, nämlich des Wochenendes, an dem besonders geballt die Filme gelaufen sind und an dem auch Jocelyn Saab selbst da war. Also sie ist nämlich jetzt ähm, inzwischen abgereist, weil sie morgen früh wieder in Paris sein muss. Ähm, ja, und aber ich sehe auch natürlich einige vertraute Gesichter und freue mich, dass einige von ihnen auch äh, den bisherigen Filmen schon gefolgt sind und jetzt da sind. Und ähm, ja, es, es lohnt sich sehr, weil der Vortrag, den wir ihnen jetzt anbieten, ähm, ist auch eine sehr ja, seltene Gelegenheit zu einem solchen äh, Thema etwas Profundes und Fundiertes zu hören. Und ähm, bevor ich ähm, auf die Referentin des Vortrags eingehe, möchte ich noch darauf hinweisen, dass dieses Plakat, das hier vorne und auch ähm, jedenfalls bis eben noch äh, vorne auf dem ähm, Plakat aus äh, Plakatstände hegen, dass es vorne noch einige Exemplare des Plakates gibt. Wenn Sie Lust haben, sich eins mitzunehmen, also umsonst, können Sie dann nach dem Film hier vorne kommen, auf dem Klavier dann sich ein Exemplar mitnehmen, sind noch so 20 Stück da, also dann gerne nach dem Film zugreifen. Und bitte gerne auch weiter die Reihe folgen, nämlich es geht mit in der Reihe der Werkschau zu Justin Saab, geht es am Donnerstag weiter um 17.30 Uhr mit zwei auch sehr interessanten Filmen, beide auf 16 mm gedreht und gezeigt dann von uns. Und zwar zum einen eine halbstündige Dokumentation über Ägypten, äh, Egypte de Mort, und dann eine sehr spannende Dokumentation über die Frente Polisario und die Sacharui. Ähm, sozusagen das ist das Programm, das halt zeigen soll, dass Jocelyn Saab eben auch jenseits des Libanon äh, auch in vielen anderen Gebieten journalistisch und filmisch tätig war. Und jetzt zu ähm, dem Vortrag, den wir jetzt gleich hören werden. Ich freue mich sehr und ich halte die Einführung weiterhin auf Deutsch, weil Mathilde Ruxell, die ähm, Referentin des äh, Vortrages, auch Deutsch versteht. Sie wird den Vortrag auf Englisch halten, aber sie versteht Deutsch, deshalb ähm, mache ich auf, auf Deutsch weiter. Ähm, Mathilde Ruxell ähm, hat Jocelyn Saab im Jahre 2013 kennengelernt und dann im Rahmen ihres Studiums äh, in Paris eine Masterarbeit geschrieben über das Werk von Jocelyn Saab. Das Buch äh, liegt gerade auf meinem Sitz. Ich kann, kannst du mal, Sie können auch nachher Mathilde Ruxell noch darauf ansprechen. Das ist jedenfalls die erste monografische Publikation, die über Jocelyn Saab veröffentlicht worden ist, vor zwei, Jahr, zwei Jahren. Ja, zwei Jahren. Äh, Jocelyn Saab, La Mémoire en Dompté, also die ungezähmte Erinnerung. Sehr, sehr tolles Werk, das ist bislang nur auf Französisch gibt, aber falls Sie Interesse haben, können Sie äh, Mathilde Ruxell ähm, nach dem Vortrag darauf ansprechen. Und noch äh, kurz Worte zu ähm, Mathilde. Sie, ähm, studi also sie schreibt jetzt derzeit ihre Doktorarbeit äh, an der Universität Paris 3 äh, unter der Leitung von Nicole Brenes, der ich auch an dieser Stelle nochmal danken möchte, die mich eben auf das Werk von Jocelyn Saab aufmerksam gemacht hat vor ungefähr einem Jahr. Und ja, ähm, genug der Vorrede. Ich freue mich sehr, dass äh, du heute da bist und bin sehr gespannt auf deinen Vortrag. Willkommen, Mathilde. Hallo, um, thank you to, to be here. Uh, so, um, I'm doing my PhD thesis about uh, the work of the female filmmakers in Tunisia, Egypt and Lebanon. So I will focus my, my, my presentation now on the, the place where Jocelyn Saab have in the middle of this, uh, of this pioneering uh, experience of making cinema for, by, for women uh, in the Middle East. So uh, Jocelyn Saab is born in uh, 1948. So she was 20 years old when, when 1968 was... Uh, Uh, broke broke out in, in the whole world and especially in the in the Middle East because it's uh, an important uh, date for 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 the Middle East. So she she's not from the generation who fought for the struggle, the liberation struggle, the the region knew uh, in the late fifties uh, and late forties, late fifties. 
but she's she still have this ideology and this idea of this pan panarabism and uh, the idea of an, the third world uh, mission to create a new a new way of uh, thinking, uh, which is not American, which is not Russian. So uh, she was kind of uh, internationalist in her philosophy. So, and actually, she's really uh, a daughter of her generation. So I think it's, that's the point I, I will discuss now because it's I think it's very important to to replace in the context of the. Israeli war as well, uh, the work of Jocelyn, because she, she worked a lot with the fighters, uh, the Palestinians one, but also the Sahlawi, as you see, or she went to Iraq, she went to, to Egypt, and uh, she spent a lot of time by documenting the struggle, the political struggle, but also the social struggles. Uh, so, um, briefly, if I want to talk about the, the career of Jocelyn Saab, uh, I can say that she started by by studying economics, because the in Lebanon you have a lot of like the banks have the the, the monopoly for until the the late seventies, uh, and uh, her father was a banker, so she was supposed to follow this uh, this way. So she came to Paris. She studied economics, and she discovered that the situation in, in for the Palestinians is very tough in Lebanon. Because she grew up in a, in an era of Beirut, which is which was um, mixed. Like uh, there, she's a Christian. She's from a Christian family, but she she grew up with Muslims a lot. So for her, it wasn't a problem. So when the the first the first conflict broke out in Lebanon between Palestinians and Christians, she was like 20 years old, and she couldn't really figure out what what was happening. So so she became really in, politically engaged, and. Um, when she decided to to finish her studies, so she did the master in economics, and then she started working in journalism. She was in Paris by the then, and she worked for the television, French television. And because she was an Arabic speaker, she was, she has been sent very young, at a very young age, to Egypt uh, during the October War that Sadat uh, ruled against the Israelis. And uh, in Libya, she had a, a great interview with Gaddafi at that, at that time during the, the Green March. He, he conducted again to, to Egypt as well. So she, she was really involved in those political um, issues of what is, what is the Arab world becoming? Because uh, and she, when she started filming, Everything was ruined already, uh, and I think the 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 fact is that the the six day wars uh, that uh, of the sixty seven was the the beginning of a of a huge um, revolution in the cinema in the Arab world. Uh, she was young at that time, but some other directors began to think about doing something for the Palestinians because after the Israeli war against uh, against Egypt, Syria, and, and Jordanian, um, that the Arab world uh, completely lost, all the politicians discussed the fact to, of supporting Palestinians. It wasn't the, the, the most important thing ever because actually uh, they were losing a lot of troops and the, the Arab ideology was falling apart, actually, at, at that time. So the, the, the artists and the filmmakers, in particular, decided to gather and to write a kind of manifesto in 67 to promote a new kind of cinema, like a third cinema, as we, as we have the, another example in the, for the Argentinian uh, cinema, or, or even in India. And you, it was a world movement, but in, in, in the Arab world, they had their own rules of making an alternative cinema. And uh, even if the women didn't sign those manifestos because she, they weren't really invited to, uh, we see starting 67 women taking the cameras and, and sh just to film and to show things. So Jocelyn is, is one of those girls who decided to show the, uh, her own reality and to, and to continue the fights, actually. So, um, the first women in the in the Arabic cinema weren't those girls like who were more involved to into the documentary field. 
uh, because actually, and Justin told it just before, if we were in the talk, um, in Egypt in the in the 30s, the industry has been made by women mostly, um, but also more than they were more producers than directors. But but as you know, in the industry, this was the Hollywood of the of the Middle East, Hollywood and the Nile. Uh, even if they're important figure, they they don't like. They're not in, in, I don't know how to say it, but uh, we had a lot of uh, producers, women producers, but even now they're not considered as, as, as the pioneers as they should be. So um, she was talking just before in the, in the previous talk about Asya Daher, because she was working on, on her as well, Jocelyn, for, for a new project. Uh, Asya Daher is a Lebanese. And she came to Egypt uh, during the late 30s. Uh, and she actually is one of the most important pioneers uh, of, the, of, the, of the cinema industry in Egypt. She was uh, very talented and she was also audacious. And she, she, was, she, was, uh, she has been the producer of Henri Barakat or uh, Youssef Shaheen. And she 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 was she was about to to create a new kind of cinema like making science fiction movies and uh, and the first historical um, the first historical movies uh, of the of the industry in Egypt. So she's very important and she's maybe one of the first women uh, which who has a name in the Egyptian industry. But you you know also like by Higa Hafez, for example, who who was directing movies at the same times in the same industry. Like it was like huge movies and musicals and uh, and historical movies as well with costumes and uh, so uh, there were pioneers in the industry, but she did, they disappeared when when Nasser came and Nasser nationalized the the industry cinema industry to promote a socialist cinema a cinema supposed to to follow the the idea and the ideology of the of the regime. So finally the the. All those women who had important position just disappeared suddenly, and uh, and the the men took the place and they mo like created movies more about social, economic, or economical problems in Egypt and and, and against uh, colonization and and so on. So we don't see any women before uh, 60, uh, 68, 69. Um, and uh, the the first woman uh, directing in in the in the Arab world are from Egypt and Lebanon actually. So uh, when they created the High Cinema Institute in Cairo, in in the first uh, promotion was in sixty uh, in sixty five. Uh, they had a woman. They had At Atayat Al Abnudi, who created a new kind of cinema without uh, promoting it with manifestos and so on. But she decided to, to make documentaries in, in a world where documentary doesn't exist. Like the industry in, in cinema, of cinema in Egypt was really focused on uh, melodramas or, or musicals. And, and the documentary never had this, uh, this, uh, the audience to, like they, they couldn't uh, really create documentary then because it wasn't, viewed as, as cinema. It was for the news, it was for television, but not for cinema. So she decided to, to create uh, a documentary movement. And uh, she, she, she's from the countryside of, of Egypt. She's from the Delta. And um, she decided to go there and to film the, the people there, like the, the farmers and the, the children and the women working on the, on the, in the daily life for the community. And uh, create like making food and 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 uh, and raising children because it's most of the time the, the main job of those women in the in the countryside of Egypt. The, the men are selling, so they're on the road all the time, and the the women are in the village raising children and making everything going on. So she she has been uh, she's one of the most important women filmmaker in Egypt till now. She's called the mother of, docu of documentary in Egypt because she's the, the very first one making documentaries and assuming it. She, she never turned to fiction because for her, 
poetry is in the, in the reality. So she wanted to show something new, something very different. Uh, and she decided to, to spend her time by showing what no one wants to see, so the margins mostly. Um, so this is part of her filmography. She has a huge filmography. Her movies are really difficult to find, but I think soon we, we, we will have the opportunity to see more because they are working on something to, to promote her movies. But she was really involved into politics as well. She, she went to, to women to ask for women what, what, what kind of change do, do they want to see in Egypt because the, the regime was very really tough with women since Sadat because Sadat was uh, like more close to the religious. And, uh, and she, she, she fought also in politics. She was also a politician at the, uh, in the 90s. She tried to follow the campaign of the women uh, in, any, in every region in Egypt. So she's a very important pers like person and figure in Egypt uh, for the feminism, also for the, for the poor. Like she was the voice for the, of the poor. And she's the very first one uh, going in this kind of new cinema, realistic cinema in a way, but also poetic, because it really has poetry. There is no comment on the images. It's just only seeing people living and uh, sometimes seeing people talking also because they, they want to, she wants to give the voice for the women who couldn't talk before. So Jocelyn has not this, it's a social documentary that is quite far from the Jocelyn's one, but in the same time, you can gather their work in, into the, in the idea of the, this poetry of reality, because if, I don't know if you saw the documentaries Jocelyn made, like what were being screened two days before. But it's, it's in the same spirit of trying to make something beautiful with the misery and the poverty. So, uh, Nabi Halotfi is an, uh, another of the pioneers, one of the first. She's Lebanese, so she's the first women filmmaker in Lebanon, actually. Uh, she also made the High Institute of Cinema in Cairo which were the only, the, the very first institute uh, created in, in the Arab world because of course it was uh, the city of cinema, so. And uh, she, she is very known, she lived in Egypt, in Egypt all of her life, she, she never get back to Lebanon, but she's very well known for the, the documentary she made on Tel Azatar, who was, which was a, a camp for refugees, for Palestinian refugees in Lebanon. Uh, because she was working for the Palestinian organization. She was supposed to make a documentary about the way the women are dealing with the life in the camps while the, the men were fighting outside against Israelis and, and, and just training to, to fight. And the phalangists, the Christian militias, came into, in 1955 to, to destroy the camp and to, they did a really huge massacre. The elders, the women and the children were the most, uh, the most uh, numerous victims. And she came back then and, and she was talking to the people she was working with since maybe one year and a half. And she just discovered that everything was ruined. And, and it's a very, very strong document because it's documenting the fight, the Palestinian fight for freedom and for, for, for land without asking for the slogan and without, without all the propaganda, the Palestinian cause some, some in the cinema had a lot. Uh, so it's a, it's a very strong movie, who, which is, I think, one of the most uh, important movie about the Palestinian cause at that time, because she, it's, it could manage with the humanity of the people. And the, the, it's not... It's not, um, it's denouncing a lot, but it's not focusing on, on anyone. It's just like, now it's misery, what can we do? And, uh, and this is something that we can find also in the Jocelyn's work, because you, this idea of going to see the people who are just not the main actors, but just the victims of everything, because they are here and they just, they just, uh, like the destiny is, is not going in the, the right way for them. Um, they, they have the same way of wanting to, to give the, the word to someone who has nothing to say at the beginning, uh, who finally can express what he wanted to, what he's feeling. So, 
Uh, after that, she worked a lot for the television, the Egyptian television, so a work less interesting than, than the Atiyat ones. But she did in, 19, in 1990 Children's Game, which is a very poetic uh, film also about the, the children in a poor area uh, playing together and, and just uh, like living even in the middle of the misery. So it's something we can find a lot in, in, in many, many, many women's movies. The, the children are a subject which is uh, very important for them, more than in the men's uh, filmmaking, actually. Um, but yeah, the rest of, of her work is less interesting. But she still, she was uh, kind of engaged for Palestine and until the, the, the end of her life. She died in, in 2014. Uh, um She's a Lebanese, uh, she's also a Jewish, so it was very difficult for her to stay in Lebanon, so she left. She spent most of her life in, in London and in Paris. Um, she is one of the best examples uh, of this internationalism from, from which Jocelyn comes to. Uh, in fact, she, she wasn't only working on Lebanon or in Lebanon-Palestine area, she went to Oman to, to document the, the revolt of the Dofaris against the British and against the Sultan in, uh, in the 70s, in the beginning of 70s, when the, the Sultan troops came to take the lands of the, the poor people in the south of, uh, of Oman because, because of the petrol and the, and the gas. Uh, and they document, they, they got, she, she and the, her, her team came with the, 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 the activists and followed the, all the guerrilla they made against the, the Sultan. So it's, it's the hour of liberation, liberation has come. It's a very um, militant and activist document. It's not, it's, it has no distance with politics. Like you, you, you're, you're following all the, the trainings and the slogans are very tough and, and you feel this spirit of, of libera liberation struggle in the continuity of the Algerians one, which was a very, or, or the idea of it's our Vietnam, it's our new Vietnam. In, uh, so this can be linked to Jocelyn's work when she was in Iraq, when she was in, in the Sahara, when she was uh, even in Libya or, um, or Egypt as well, because she, she, she was uh, in the Golan during the October war. Um, at the, uh, once again, most of the, uh, the actors of her movies are women. Uh, so it's not a feminist perspective because it's not trying to deal with your women's rights, but it's just trying to give women voices to, to see to people. Um, uh, she did in, in 84 Leila and the Wolves, which is also a very important document because she, the idea of, the, of this movie was to focus and to put light on the women uh, fighters in, of Palestine from the, the 20s to, to 80s, like when, when Israel came to Lebanon to uh, made the siege of Beirut. Um, and it's a half fiction, half documentary. So um, it's very, it's very like new in the form. Like in the, f the form is very, no it's like very different than what you can find at that time. So she's trying also to create something between, uh, between what we can say and between what we can react actually. So I think it's very interesting to, it's a, it's a very important movie as well for the, for this time and it's documenting the war in Beirut as well. So. So it's of course had been censored everywhere in the Arab world, but uh, it's uh, also the it's also the problem that all the women have have uh, known uh, in at that time particularly. Randa Shahar Sabah is uh, also Lebanese, and she do she documented the war more uh, as Jocelyn did, like she was taking. Um, a lot of really long shootings in the streets of Beirut during the destructions. And she stayed during the, the siege as well. And her sister was one of the most important uh, activist, communist activists in Lebanon. So she's from a communist family. 
and she, she, she is known for the kite. The kite uh, won the Venice Prize, Venice Festival's Prize in uh, 2003. Uh, it's talking about a love story between uh, a Lebanese and, uh, and an Israeli uh, in the border in the south. Uh, and she made kind of a lot of fiction. She, she, when she turned into fiction, she al almost stopped making documentaries. She made a civilized people with Mirna Macaron that we, we have met this morning as well uh, about the war and about the, the people staying, uh, the people leaving the house during the war, but keeping the house housemaid in the, and so, so that's the life of those people during the war, like they don't have money to go anywhere and uh, you have to figure out to, how to live in the war. So she's also an interesting person but she has a, she had a long career she she she's she's dead in she she's dead in uh, she in 2007 uh, and she had this uh, international recognition so so but but we don't know the uh, primary documentary so i think we, it's also important to to notice to talk about this person uh, and the last country where we can find uh, women in the beginning of the 70s uh, is Tunisia. Because Tunisia uh, is very proud to have this equilibrium between uh, women and men and this kind of uh, equity uh, since Bourguiba made the code of personal status uh, in, in, in 56 to, to, to give rights to women. So... Uh, the cinema was supposed to promote this too. So in Tunisia, you will find a lot of movies made by men or women about the, Tuni the women's cause. But when women do it, they do it in a way that don't please the, the regime. So Selma Bakkar was supposed to create a documentary about the feminism in Tunisia and the history of the feminism. So she made something between fiction and documentary uh, from from antiquity to, to the recent period. So it, it's... In the form, it's very interesting. You can find it on YouTube. Um, but the, the 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 way she was telling this is, is this history wasn't in the way that Bogiba wanted to to see it. So she has been censored since 2006 for this movie. So she decided to continue, and she she's the first producer in Tunisia, women producer in Tunisia. So also the first. Um, uh, director in the television in Tunisia, so and now she was she she's making politics since 2011 when the revolution uh, broke. Uh, she decided to to in, to be in, engaged in politics to for a democratic party, uh, and she's still doing movie like the the last one uh, has been shown in the, in Tunisia in Carthage uh, this year. So. Um, I don't know what it is, but she, she was really involved into the refugees also in 2011, the Sy Libyan refugees in Tunisia, and the condition uh, of life of those people. And so she, she's also one of the most important uh, women filmmakers in Tunisia, and she's the first one making something. And once again, she has been censored by the regime. So, And the last one uh, is an anthropologist. She's Sophie Frashu. She made a lot of... She, she was actually uh, working for the CNRS in France, like a research uh, lab. And um, uh, for this lab, she made movies like uh, to, to show. But in these movies, which, who, which have a kind of uh, very traditional uh, form, uh, she was very politically incorrect. So she had also a problem with Bogiba and with Ben Ali. But she, she, she's very interesting because she doesn't consider herself as a filmmaker, but what she has done is a very huge work. I just gave three three names because the rest is very into uh, handwork uh, practices and uh, and uh, and heritage. Like, it. but she's trying to show what is to be a Tunisian. Everyone is talking about the Tunisian people, but what, what does that mean when you don't consider the people working in the fields, working in the in the in the handwork and um, so all of those women are uh, and the, only those women actually because it's not much but it's, they are the only one we can find 
for that time, starting in the beginning of the 70s, are contemporary of Jocelyn. Uh, what can we do is that all of them have this kind of uh, idea that cinema is a political act. So they only do, do images to, to denounce something, to, to say something against a certain reality that the regimes wants to show, uh, against also the, the colonialism which, which was going back in this region. Um, Israel is a good example for that because it, it has been supported by France and, and the British uh, at the beginning of the 70s. So, so for them, it was a way to fight. So when you talk about, even if they're talking about a lot of a lot about women conditions, you, it's not possible to, to to say anything about feminism in those movies because it's it's not a question they ask the, to themselves. So even if Jocelyn now is saying like, yeah, maybe I did a feminist work, I think she never thought about it before like 2013 when when someone asked her to make something about feminism, like she made uh, kind of uh, six series movies about gender, but before that she was like, yeah, I don't think it's a really important fact because I, I just want to show things and I think that if people don't like me, it's not because I, I, am, I, am, I am working as a woman, but it's because I'm working as a political activist. And I think all of, all of those women decided to, to do cinema for that, for this reason. And that's why uh, I think it's, it's very difficult to, to to discuss Jocelyn's work in the now, for example, in the in the in the context of of women filmmaking, film filmmaking, because it's I think it's really a question of generation, and this generation is a specific generation who that and that all of them are still involved politically in in the in the fight of others and the fight of the poor people. And uh, yeah, that's why I decided to focus on those pioneers and not discussing the rest of her work, because I think it's uh, it's like yeah, it's more important to 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 see those uh, unknown women and to maybe to 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 move and to, th to try to to research on them too, than discussing the contemporary uh, issues of women filmmaking, which is. Now in the, they are really different because they have Arab funds. Most of the of the school in cinema school have, are, are are most of the students in the cinema school are women now. So yeah, that's why I, I decided to make this uh, presentation like this. Thank you.